Good afternoon, Locker Room. We are going to do a video on seller net sheets today. So what I'm going to do is just do a fake one. This is actually my house. So I've created a loop for it. And you're going to add a document. Go to Templates. Go to GAR Forms. And then search Net. You're looking for Estimate Net to Seller. Click on that, hit copy, and then it'll end up in your loop. So I've already started one due to timing for the video. So for your estimate net to seller, you're going to go ahead and put the seller's name, address. You can put the county, let's just fill it all out, the date it's prepared, and then estimated close date. So I usually do, if it's January, I'll do like two months out. Um, so we're going to do March 29th. So for the sales price, you're going to put your estimated, what you think the sales price is going to be. Or if you're doing this for an actual offer, you'll put the, the purchase price in there. So we'll say 230000 So the first thing you're going to talk about is your payoff. So I do have a mortgage balance of 152000 So I'm going to put in my mortgage balance here, one hundred fifty two. Now, there's really not any prepayment penalties anymore like there used to be. So for the most part, I leave all these blank. So I'm going to take the sales price, $230,000. i am going to minus out my payoff amount. So if I sold for $230,000, paid off the mortgage, there will be $78,000 left. So now let's talk about cost of sale. So the first thing is seller's contribution to closing. Most buyers who are getting financing are probably going to need some assistance with closing costs. Closing costs can be paid by the buyer and or the seller. So I usually will put, depending on who, I'm, who my seller is, a range. You could put no closing costs. You could do zero. Or you could do an estimated 3%. So let's say 3% is 6900 So somewhere between none and 6900 will be what will allot for closing costs. Now for taxes, you're gonna wanna pull up the tax bill for, for that property. So normally I will go into Georgia MLS. I'll go into, let me close this out. CRS tax suite. I hit the street. I know it's in Gwinnett County, so you can put up to three counties in here if you're not sure what county. Make sure you hit street, start typing in the number, the address, and it'll pop up. So you'll click on that. And this is the tax record, so you're going to scroll down to taxes. So for 2018, oops, 2018, taxes were 362251. So we're going to go back to our net sheet and put 3622, that's for the year. So what we're gonna do is break it down to, if we closed on March 29th, me as the seller, I will owe 87 days worth of taxes from January 1st to the 29th. So we're gonna take this amount, 3622, divide it by 365 days, and then you're gonna times it by the number of days, which is 87. So that'll give you $864, that's my portion of the taxes from January, to March 29th. I usually don't do special assessments or surveys, um, but home inspection and repairs, again, I do a range, zero to, and I just made up a number, 3,000. Based upon this sales price and the condition of the home, it really shouldn't need too much, um, but again, it's up to the seller. So that's also a range. Now for real estate brokerage fee, it is 6%. 6% is the commission that you charge, because you will keep three and you'll give three to the other agent, the buyer's agent. So the cost to the seller is the complete 6%. So 230 times 6% will give me 13,800. So now for the cost of sales, we're gonna add up 6,900, 864, 3,000, 13,800, all that added up comes up to 24,564. So, depending on, again, your seller, sorry, it's not zero. If they decide they don't want to give anything in closing costs and they don't want to do any kind of repairs, they just don't want to do anything, 
the very bare minimum, they're going to have to pay their taxes and they're going to have to pay commission. So worst case scenario, 14000 is the cost. Or worst, uh, best case scenario, worst case scenario, it's going to cost about 25000 so just depending on how you decide to do this. Some sellers, I just do worst case scenario all the way around. I just do everything worst case scenario. And then I let them know this is worst case scenario. Sorry. Or sometimes I might do best case scenario. It just really depends on the seller and what they their motivation is. So now that we have our cost of sale, we're going to take... 78,000 minus the 24,564 that will give the seller I always put approximately because we because you never know approximately they will net or I will net 53,000 in profit so again have the conversation with your seller prior to presenting this to find out what they're looking for you need to find out motivation why are they selling how much do they owe if they owe anything on the property? Another good question to ask is, are they aware of any liens on the property? They may not know um, up front, but uh, the attorney will find it on the back end. So we'll find out eventually if there is. Um, so once I talk to the seller, so let's say, for instance, I'm the seller and I'm saying, hey, you know what? I bought this as an investment. And so I'm trying to get as much money as possible out of it to purchase another investment. Um, or I could be a seller to say, hey, I just want to get out of this. I'm tired of going up and down all these stairs. I just want to ranch. And so it may not be money driven. So find out their motivation and find out ahead of time what they are expecting here. Because they may not know or they may have an unrealistic number in their mind. Like, oh, I have to walk away with 75000 or else I'm not going to sell. So if that's the case, I'm going to have a different conversation with that seller to say, hey, we need to go back to motivation because you're going to only net 53. Or if it's a seller who's like, hey, you know, I, I just really need to get into my other house and just, you know, get out of this without having to pay any money. Well, now I can say, hey, you're going to actually make a huge profit. So make sure you have the conversations with your seller to find out where their mind is at, what they are expecting, what are they thinking before you present this and have the conversation because because you may mess it up. I've done that before. I went into a seller and I was like, oh, you're going to make 30000 And she was like, boo, if I don't make fifty, I'm not going to sell it. So had I known that ahead of time, I would have come at this net sheet with a different conversation. So I hope this is helpful. I usually um, keep this in my file and adjust as we get offers. If we get an offer at 125, I'm going to have to adjust all these numbers, right? Everything will change. So make sure that you have this in your file, in your dot loop or in your file so that you can always reference back to um, what you had told your seller in the first place. Hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please call or text me and I'll help you out. Thanks.